Now let's look at how we treat uh, heart failure and how the categories help with the treatment. So if you look at heart failure with reduced ejection fraction or mildly reduced or improved ejection fraction, they all benefit from the same uh, GDMT or guideline directed medical therapy. But when you look at the pathophysiology or the cause, the treatment is very different. So ischemic cardiomyopathy, we think about revascularizing them. Even in the group of inflammatory cardiomyopathy, the specific cause of the inflammation is important and it guides management. So viral, eosinophilic, infectious, sarcoid, giant cell, these are some of the inflammatory cardiomyopathies and as you can see, the treatment is very different for each of these. For viral, typically we don't really need to address the cause. Eosinophilic, it depends on what's driving it. Infectious, so things like Chagas or Lyme's, we have to treat with antibiotics. Cardiac sarcoid immunosuppression, giant cell is mega doses of immunosuppression. Similarly, and so how do we look for a cause? So among the patients, the 20 to 40% of patients where they looked for a cause, how do we uh, look for it? And so this is the largest study and the most contemporary uh, study from the Optum database, which is a large American database of patients with both commercial insurance and Medicare. And this spanned from 2003 to 2020. And this was over half a million patients with new onset heart failure who, was ho who were hospitalized. And in this study, 35% had any testing. But this is a breakdown of what testing they had and you can see the most common testing was invasive coronary angiogram followed by stress ECG, nuclear imaging, stress echocardiogram, and I have highlighted MRI, which was done in 2.5% of these patients, and then CTA was done even lower in um, uh, less than 2% of patients. And so CMR, to look for the myocardium or look at the myocardium, it's the reference standard for function and morphology, and uh, this cartoon you, ha you may have seen before in Deepen's talks and many other talks. Um, it illustrates the different pathologies and the different patterns of LGE, which we can use to uh, identify the cause of the cardiomyopathy. And CMR offers a virtual gross pathology view of the entire heart and many, if not most, cardiomyopathies have unique features, and these can be used to identify the cause and to distinguish between the different causes. So our contributions to some of these, so this is, uh, we looked at anthracycline cardiomyopathy. Um, so the prior literature talked about different patterns of LGE. Some papers mentioned no LGE, others mentioned the infralateral LGE. Um, so we looked at a large uh, cohort of 300 patients who were treated with anthracyclines or trastuzumab, and we actually found 10% of them had LGE, but they were in different patterns, um, different uh, locations. And when we looked at uh, their clinical history, they were all explained by other cardiomyopathies, and mainly coronary artery disease or ischemic cardiomyopathy. And so our conclusion was that anthracycline cardiomyopathy does not have any LGE, and this feature can really help distinguish it from other cardiomyopathies when you have patients with suspected cardiotoxicity. And here's an example. Uh, again, the pathology image is from uh, Bill Roberts' paper, and uh, there is no scar, no grossly visible scar on the pathology image. And uh, this is a patient with uh, um, anthracycline cardiotoxicity from our institution who was transplanted, uh, and there was no gross scar on the pathology uh, specimen or the CMR. So a few nu nuances, so how often does ischemic cardiomyopathy occur with no LGE? So this is something uh, that often comes up, uh, especially when uh, CMR physicians talk about using CMR. Uh, on pathology studies, ischemic cardiomyopathy almost always has gross cardiac damage uh, in the form of scar or necrosis, and this is true regardless of whether they have a clinical history of MI or not. 
And so hibernating myocardium uh, uh, without any LGE is extremely rare. And we had the opportunity to look at this in our study. And so among patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy and an EF of less than 50%, uh, the prevalence of uh, no LGE was anywhere from 1.1 to 2.3 percent, and this depends on the definition of uh, uh, severe CAD, which is severe enough to cause hibernating myocardium. Now, so which patients should get a CMR? So obviously, ideally everyone, uh, that would be the clear answer, and it's not really such uh, a terrible answer because if you look at the uh, 2023 ESC cardiomyopathy guidelines, CMR is recommended in patients with cardiomyopathy at initial evaluation. So uh, they um, uh, recommend, and this is a class 1B uh, recommendation, but practically speaking, uh, uh, when you have limited resources uh, in most parts of this country, I would argue that uh, we should use this in uh, every patient other than those who have clear-cut ischemic cardiomyopathy. And what do I mean by that? So the patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy who may have echocardiographic features suggestive of non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, uh, perhaps they have uh, um, asymmetric uh, um, left ventricular hypertrophy or symmetric left ventricular hypertrophy, or maybe they have disproportionate LV dysfunction. So these are the cases where even with ischemic cardiomyopathy, they would benefit from a CMR.